It is good shepherd Sunday. It is a day to meditate on the situation of the church. The Lord is not telling us a parable because He's not, but He is using symbols, synonyms, examples. He speaks of Himself and defines Himself as the Good Shepherd. He does not say it as one who puts on a medal that he doesn't deserve, but because he knows he is there for love and that he's going to give his life for love. That is why he says that the Good Shepherd is the one who gives his life for the sheep. He speaks of the faithful, of all, because we priests are also faithful. He speaks of the faithful as sheep, and not because they are sheep, because he is making a comparison, but he does not say that those sheep are fools. On the contrary, he speaks of those sheep and tells them that some of them have a clear sign of intelligence because they listen to the voice of the shepherd. They distinguish it. They know that this voice, the voice of the shepherd, the good shepherd, this voice deserves credit, and they know how to distinguish it from other voices, perhaps seductive, pleasant to hear, that they say what well, one wants to hear, but that they are not the voice of the Good Shepherd. The third character in this story is the wench earner, the wench earner, the bad shepherd, the bad shepherd, the wage earner, Jesus says, is someone who is only in it for the money. These are the words of the Lord. The wage earner does not love the sheep. He does not care about them. He is only there for money. I believe that all priests, all of us, should read several times those St. Augustine's homilies, where he speaks of the bad shepherds. Now, that is really a fitting. St. Augustine knew very well what he was talking about. The bad shepherd has become a priest to improve his standard of living, to have prestige. He does not care about the sheep. He does not care about them. He does not care about them. Why are there not confessors? Why? And I'm not only referring now time of pandemic where there is more risk now. Why are there not confessors? Has no one ever asked these questions? I know. It seems obvious to me. I am surprised that any everyone doesn't see it. Confession is a sacrament that doesn't give money. That doesn't give money. You don't go to confessor and ask him how much is going to cost you. He does not give money. There is no business in confession. So confession is a sacrament for which no one times is salonted. What a shame. What could say St. John Vianney of Cure of Ours, who spent so many hours confessing, says, or San Juan de Avila, but he doesn't give money, because at the end, the day of the Mass, well, they don't care much either, but they take alms of intentions, 40 intentions, sometimes 50, well, and the collection, well, they say in that way, I remember years ago, I interviewed a famous Spanish singer before she died, obviously, Rocío Jurado. She was a practicing Catholic, and she said that when she went to Mass, she suffered a lot because it seemed like the priest was sweeping. Everything is hurry. Let's go, go, go. Finish. He's sweeping. She said, with a unique Andalusian grace. But well, the Mass is celebrated that way and that every day, on Monday vacation, 
There is no mass in many parishes, Eastern time, octave of Easter. There is no mass because I work a lot during Holy Week. I cannot get over my astonishment and my scandal. If there were money for confessions, oh, there would not be lack of confessors. But there is no business. Or you have to make an appointment. You have to make an appointment. You have to confess one hour a week. What a sacrifice. One hour a week of confessions. People waiting, standing online. Or asking an appointment through the secretary, through the other secretary, so that the priest will decide to give you a little while. It is scandalous. Shameful. And if these words seem harsh to anyone, I repeat, let them read St. Augustine, who is a saint. However, we are not only in that situation. We are in the situation, the bad shepherd, the salaried one, who only seeks money, does not abandon the sheep to be eaten by the furious wolves, but alias himself with the furious wolves, to share among all them the pieces of the sheep and teach badly. It is not that they not teach, but that they teach badly. God will know in His conscience because only the Lord can know that. But what it seems is bad teaching. The goodness of it is all right. Do whatever you want. God is good. God loves you. Since God is good and God loves you, you can do whatever you want and go to communion. They are not teaching Jesus' doctrine. Moreover, if Jesus makes them uncomfortable for their business, they revolt against Him. They doubt His extension, His divinity, that what we know from the Gospel is true. Because at that time there were no type recorders. This is the situation. Of course, it is not the general situation. There are many good pastors, many of them. There are many shepherds who love the Lord and who for the love of the Lord sacrifice themselves for the sheep. There are many shepherds who do confess. There are many shepherds who teach the true doctrine. There are many pastors who even in this epidemic sometimes clandestinely have celebrated Mass in homes or have gone to confession or have gone to visit the sick. There are many such pastors. These shepherds also have their faults, their sins, of course, because they are human beings. They are not perfect. They have bad days. They are human beings. But they are struggling. They try to be kind, welcoming, speaking the truth with charity, not to throw anyone out, but not to admit sin, even if they always keep their doors open to the sinner. There are many good shepherds, thank God. And there are bad shepherds. What should we do? Because we are all, I repeat, we are all sheep. We are all disciples. We are all followers of Jesus. What do we have to do? The Lord says, quote, Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, end quote. Listen to the voice that speaks from our heart that which intelligence called the sensus fidelium, the sense of the faithful, a kind of a common sense. It is true that it is less and less common. The sense the many of the faithful have to distinguish. This word that this priest says, I don't quite understand it. What does it mean? It, means, it seems strange to me. That common sense, that sense of fidelium, the maize priests who did not teach the doctrine of Jesus not to be listened to. Let us pray to the Lord today, 
the date of the Good Shepherd for all the pastors, from the Pope to the deacon, for all the pastors, that they may be, that we may be good shepherds, that we may be saints, and if we are not, because we are sinners, that we may try to be saints, that we may teach Jesus' teaching and not our own, so that we do not be back down when the wolves come to kill the sheep, that we may teach the right doctrine of Jesus Christ, even when we are attacked and criticized for it, that we may always be at the disposition of God's people, and that we may be able, if necessary, to go out and defend Christ, the Good Shepherd, before the world and before the bad shepherd. Amen.